In the winter season around December 25th the people celebrated the winter solstice. And so the winter solstice would come about somewhere from December 21st to around January 6th or so. So the people of the north would celebrate different holidays of different occasions based upon the winter solstice. In the winter time, there is a period where there is no light you are literally in darkness 24 hours of the day. And this stretches for some time now could you imagine if you're living in Alaska, or living in Canada, or living in Norway, and you don't have central heating, and the cold is outside. It's darkness around you. People are dying from disease. It's a terrible time. And every family would probably lose somebody or they would know of somebody dying from the cold and disease during that season. This is the winter solstice. And so when the sun starts to come out, the people now are looking at the sun as a life-giving force, and so during that time, several ceremonies were held. In northern countries, in the far north was the Feast of the Twelve Nights which stretched from December 25th to January 6th. Also in ancient Greece, there was the Bacchanalia, which was held for their god Bacchus, the god of wine and sport and play. The Romans had the Saturnalia, for their god Saturn, their main son god Saturn and so you find during these times, that the people held ceremonies in the north, they would burn our bonfires, the light was important to the fire because the fire represents the light the life-giving force for those who worship nature. Also in the north, they recognized that there was one tree that even that despite the cold would remain alive the evergreen tree the fir tree and so in some cases. They would take this fir tree believing that there were powers of life within the tree and they would put it in their homes, set it there and put a light on the top of it or burn them in the front or they would make mistletoes and put them over their doorways a type of what we would call Taiwis or Tamima it is an amulet and they would hang the amulet over their doors hang the amulet in their hall hoping that this fir tree that this so called life giving force would protect them from the danger of the winter and so their ceremonies developed around this and this went on for hundreds of years we also find in the ancient northern countries and the druids of the north they carried out special ceremonies surrounding the mistletoe and surrounding the fir tree and the beliefs and they would meet within circular areas and they had a secretive cult that spread throughout the far northern countries one of the interesting individuals and you can look this up if you can find it in the Dictionaries or encyclopedias is a man called Mithra or Mithras this is a very mysterious character and when you look at history you find that this individual called Mithra was born on December 25th his day of the week was the seventh day of the week. That we still call Sunday he was supposed to be the sun come out of the sun god himself and they had a special sacrament made up of bread and wine and they would make this drink during this time and supposedly he died for the sins of the people sounds familiar doesn't it? T but when you try to find Minta or Mithras in the encyclopedias through state intervention erased the name why is this that is because after the time of Jesus Issa Alasana when the message began to spread and they went north and you see within historical writings that Barnabas. One of his disciples met a man named Saul or Paul later called himself Paul Paul said he saw Jesus on the Damascus road. And he went to the disciples but the disciples turned against Paul, only Barnabas stayed with him but when Paul and Barnabas went into Greece. Barnabas left him now what is the reason why they all left him what are the concepts coming through Paul. Many people say well they left him because he was Saul before. And he used to torture the early followers of Jesus L but also you can see and if you look at present day Christianity that most of the concepts of the trinity of the blood sacrifice the original sin and most of the concepts which relate to more than one God are coming through Paul the preachers are quoting Paul sometimes more than Jesus during their sermons and so Barnabas left Paul and somewhere in the early days in Rome or Greece L those missionaries who were teaching the teachings of Jesus. 
Isa alayhi salam met with this force coming from the north and so you will see in ancient Roman history that is in some cases the Roman emperor would go out to the Colosseum and the gladiators would be fighting each other and everybody's cheering for the gladiators sounds like one of our football games they would go to the Colosseum right and the gladiators would fight and then if one of the gladiators was down and they would look at the emperor should I kill them or not and if he wanted to kill him he would give him that sign one of the terrible things happening during these rituals at the Colosseum is that they would bring the Christians out men women and children and feed them to hungry animals they would take a hyena or a wolf or a lion and get it hungry and crazy and beat it and throw raw meat at it and then send it out on the people and they would cheer and watch as the animal ripped the bodies apart. This is a terrible culture tear the bodies apart and so somewhere along the line somebody who couldn't take the torture who felt that maybe we can win these people over made a compromise and you start to see changes going on from the early part of the Christian era in southern Europe, where the major ceremonies held by the nature worshipping people are combined with Christian names and Christian ceremonies and therefore what comes forth to us is a mixture with the two streams coming together. Where you get a monotheistic name or a monotheistic character with a pagan ceremony and so the mixture of this together is what is giving us the present day holidays that we see number one we understand that Isa alayhi salam according to the different reports of the different scholars in many religions he was not born in the cold weather history shows us that he was born during the warm weather even in the Christian traditions they have the belief that the shepherds were tending their flocks. Outside and in Palestine. You cannot keep your flocks outside in the winter time in the evening you bring them in because it's cool at night and so it was the warm weather it was also the time of the taxes in the north in the story coming in the Quran when we see the mention I in chapter 19 in verses 24 to 25 and we see the mention of the story of Mary because the Muslims believe that Miriam may Allah be pleased with her was a virgin and she had dedicated her life to the worship of one God prayer and fasting and by the power of Allah that the Creator breathed his spirit into her and she conceived Jesus he said to be and it is she conceived Jesus is salam without a father without a man that is a belief of Islam it is also a belief that when she felt the pain of the pregnancy that the angel came to her and told her to go outside of the city she went outside of the city to a remote area and there she found a palm tree and she found water and it was speaking about little Jania it was speaking about a type of root OB or a type of dates and those who know who have lived in the desert area know that when the dates become a ripe when you start to see the color of the dates change because dates are not brown you know dates are originally red and they yellow there are other colors but they turn the brown it sits at the height of the heat that the dates become ripe and so it's at that time that she gave birth to Issa so from different points of view different historical points of view and different religions. We understand that Issa alayhi salam was not born during the winter season he was born in the warm weather so who was it that was born in the winter season? Who is that character now let us become detectives and try to find out the answer to this problem number one you have to understand this concept of Saturn the concept of Bacchus when they are portrayed by the different artists who drew pictures of them or the sculptures they are usually portrayed as a heavy set man with a white beard. And when in the Sistine Chapel Michelangelo drew his picture you could see the long flowing beard and there are pictures of this man on a sled being drawn by snakes with wings, snakes do not normally fly but in this case, the snakes have wings and the heavy set man is on his sled being drawn by these flying animals sounds familiar to you now doesn't it? He's being drawn by the flying animals he's before performing miracles he is coming out on December 25th which is not the birthday of Issa Salam has nothing to do with Christianity it is the time of the Bacchanalia, and the Saturnalia, and he is representing riotous fun drunken reverie and so what happens on Christmas the Christmas season especially in America people at today are not even thinking about Issa Salam they're not even thinking about Jesus they look and how they can get drunk on. Christmas what is going on in the Caribbean and many paths if they offer you a Christmas pudding or Christmas pie or Christmas drink watch out because it's probably laced with rum or wine that's the spirit of the season now this riotous occasion that was going on went so far that the Christian church banned it and the Church of England according to historical sources banned it to 1647 it was prohibited in England to celebrate Christmas because they saw Christmas as being a pagan holiday this is. 
An official position taken by the Christian Church the Church of England who is known at that time as Puritans what happened was an individual was superimposed a name was superimposed we hear about the name of Saint Nicholas Saint Nicholas now Saint Nicholas himself is coming from the ancient writings of Bell Wolf, and in these writings which are done in the Scandinavian region we find the name Nick or Nickel or Nick or he was known as a demon the demon of the north he was known as the evil. Spirit of the North the name of Odin the evil principle and so in Germany and many of the northern countries the people looked upon this so-called Saint Nick as being an evil force and they would tell their children in the wintertime don't go outside because if you do Nicholas will come along Nick Hill will come along he'll capture you put you in his bag and take you away and so they used it as a negative concept in Isaiah in what is left of the Bible in chapter 14 in 1413 the devil is known as the Prince of Darkness and it is an understanding that his throne the seat of his power is in the north somewhere in the north is the seat of power of this evil and so the Germans also when they depicted Nicholas or this palace Nickel as they would say Pels Nickel in German it means a furry devil and they depicted him they depicted him as a man with red fur he had a red fur coat and he was his base was in the north and he was the essence of evil and the Church of England till 1647 took the Position that this celebration could not go on so what we are seeing is that the Christmas occasion was the time of evil it was the time of the belief in the Saturnalia and the Bacchanalia and because of this they shifted the occasion to New Year's Eve they shifted all of their feelings and their merriment and their evil to New Year's Eve now before we go to that looking back at Christmas. What is happening now on Christmas season I don't know what goes on in Miami but in the northern cities and on Christmas occasions they put lights around and Santa Claus parades do you ever Santa Claus parade they have Santa Claus parades and Saint Nicholas is outside and he's in the streets and everybody's talking about Saint Nicholas and the poor children are taught that Saint Nicholas is going to come down your chimney most people don't have chimneys in Miami anyway but a 350 pound man is going to come down your chimney and bring you presents and keep his clothes white and red and he goes to all of the homes in the area and put a presence in your stockings and put our presents under your tree and then fly back out into space and the father the poor father who sweat and toiled all year to get you the presents gets no credit for the present given to the child Saint Nicholas comes down the chimney give you this present flies off into the night and many of us were raised thinking. Believing in this some of us would sneak into the night and look and see our father put in the president of the tree we knew what he was doing anyway but you went along with it and the people say well you know it's Christmas don't you like to have fun you want to stop the children from having fun what kind of people are you but what is there what are you teaching the children you are using the name of Jesus using the name of Isa alayhi salam and you are using a figure who historically is the devil himself will yahoo belong they are using his figure and he has now taken over the Christmas season Christmas now to most people means materialism you have to buy presents for your cousins and your friends and you got to buy about 30 for our presents and you find that most American people are in debt for six months after Christmas now where is Jesus you get drunk you fight you lose all your money the stores raise their prices Issa is described as a very humble person most of the time he didn't wear shoes only one or two changes of clothing a very simple person eating very simple food fasting most of the time you see what is going on there are two streams now a stream of polytheism a stream of monotheism and now the polytheism the materialism is overtaking the monotheism and standing in the way and taking over our society and some foolish Muslims coming along from outside of in their country say oh I just want to be an American I want a tree too. So I said one of the brothers said he had a Christmas tree in this house he came for I said brother do you know what the tree stands for he said no okay I'll get a palm tree with dates now I'll make it halal a halal Christmas tree.